Here we go! The episode begins with sexy jawline guy pushing a dead guy into the water in a canoe. Kind of like a viking funeral, but with less fire. Okay cool, Mama Stark is here too. It's good to know that these two have survived this long. Oh wait, now this guy with a bow is lighting his arrow on fire. So this is a viking funeral. But this dude has awful aim and misses the canoe three times. This old grizzled man takes his bow and does it himself on his first try. Before the arrow even hits, he walks away confidently. Oh man, I wish he missed. We cut inside of a castle where Bad Aim Guy is calling Sexy Jawline Guy his nephew. So this must be Mama Stark's brother, which probably means the dead guy was their dad. Grizzled Old Man doesn't like Bad Aim Guy very much, but I definitely think that they're also related because they both have dolphins on their chest. Sexy Jawline Guy is mad at Bad Aim Guy because he disobeyed his orders at the last battle. Sexy Jawline Guy also reveals that Short Haired Queen's family has Red Haired Queen and Young Sad Girl as prisoners. We cut to who I think is short-haired Queen's dad, but I'm still not 100% sure. Bald Guy, Rat Assistant, and Peter Dinklage are all there too. They all sit down and then short-haired Queen arrives and moves a chair next to her dad. Peter Dinklage then grabs a chair and moves it all the way to the other side of the table, and then acts super sarcastic towards his dad. He's also got this pretty fresh looking gash on his face that I know turns into a scar later. So he must have had his face cut pretty recently. Daddy Lannister asks where Handsome Man in Armor is, but nobody knows. Apparently he escaped from somewhere, so he must have been held prisoner by somebody before getting away. Bald Guy tells Daddy Lannister where Sexy Jawline Guy's army is. Then the Rat Assistant starts talking about his plan to marry Red-Haired Queen's aunt so he can become Lord of the Vale and turn Sexy Jawline Guy's family against him. Peter Dinklage says that Rat Assistant should stay to watch over the finances, but then Daddy Lannister names Peter Dinklage the new Master of Coin. Master of Coin sounds like a fun Peter Dinklage spin-off about being a 30-year-old Indian actor living in New York. We cut to a group of men on horses singing some weird song about a bear licking the honey off of a woman. These men have taken Handsome Man in Armor and Tall Woman prisoner. These two are arguing about who is the better sword fighter. I guess they got into a fight, but then they both got taken prisoner? So I think Tall Woman is in Sexy Jawline Guy's army, and I know for a fact that Handsome Man in Armor is in the Lannister army, so this group of singing men must be a third completely unrelated army. We cut to Blacksmith and Young Sad Girl talking to a guy with a man bun, and I think this is the bear bite guy from season 7. The guy who can resurrect people and gets killed by a bear. Blacksmith and Young Sad Girl are being held against their will, but bear bite guy is being nice to them. Then we see the hound and he's also been taken prisoner. So it kind of seems like Short Haired Queen's castle might have recently been raided or attacked, and this group stole Young Sad Girl away from the castle, and Handsome Man in Armor was also taken prisoner during that fight. Then this little baker boy walks out, and says that he's gonna stay in this town and bake bread at the inn for the rest of his life. He also reveals that the group that took young sad girl and blacksmith is the Brotherhood. I remember hearing about the Brotherhood in season 7. I'm still not really sure what their deal is though. The baker boy and young sad girl seem to be really close friends. He gives her a piece of bread shaped like a wolf as a goodbye present. We cut to Mama Stark talking to old grizzled man. She reveals that he is her uncle, and then she reveals that the dead dude at the viking funeral was her dad. I actually got something right! They talk about Mama Stark's dead dad for a while, and then Mama Stark breaks down because she doesn't think she'll ever see her two young sons again because she thinks they're dead. Well, we all know that Weird Raven Kid doesn't die, but I guess she has another son that is probably super dead. We cut to Sexy Jawline Guy's wife putting a band-aid on a little kid. She's messing with him, telling him that Sexy Jawline Guy is a werewolf, and then we find out that this kid is a Lannister. We cut to a guy that looks and sounds like an old Severus Snape. He finds a bunch of dead horses in a spiral shape in the snow. Redbeard, Bastard King, and Savage Lady are there too. We find out that the commander of the Night's Watch led 300 men beyond the wall, and they all got killed by the dead army. Old Snape tells Redbeard to take Bastard King with him to fight at a black castle. And then he tells Redbeard that if Bastard King isn't useful, to kill him. So was Bastard King also a prisoner? I'm just gonna assume that everybody in the show is currently a prisoner. We cut to a bunch of beat up looking guys showing up to a small town. Heavyset guy is with them. He thinks he recognizes a wolf, but it must not be the wolf he thinks it is because the wolf just walks away. I hate when that happens, it's so embarrassing. The group walks up to a house and this old white guy talks to this other old white guy. I gotta tell you guys, it is getting difficult to come up with names for these characters when they're all just old white men. This house is full of women. 
They're just everywhere. I don't know how this guy got so many ladies. He seems pretty gross. He must be super wealthy or a very generous lover. Then this ladies man says that heavyset guy would be a good meal. And he asks everyone else why they don't eat him. Heavyset guy gets upset and goes outside. There's a woman screaming, so he goes to investigate. What the heck? Heavyset guy's wife is having a baby. What is she doing here? She looks at heavyset guy as if she knows him. So wait, have these two met before? And is that baby that she's popping out his baby? We cut to a guy tied to a cross. It's Green Eyed Guy. Whoa, what? Angry Eyes is helping him. Angry Eyes unties him and gives him water. Then they sneak outside and Angry Eyes gives Green Eyed Guy a horse and tells him to ride away. His eyes aren't even that angry right now. Wow, this episode just completely got away from me. I thought I knew what was going on before and now I just have no idea. We cut to the woman with red hair from season 7. She's leaving this guy who she says is the son of fire. He's complaining that he doesn't want her to leave, and he says that he wants short-haired queen's blonde son and sexy jawline guy both dead. So is this guy the leader of one of those groups that took people prisoner? He tells woman with red hair to make him another baby, but she says no because he doesn't have the strength and it would kill him. He tries to seduce her by whispering, I want you, into her ear, and she's just like, not tonight, I'm not feeling good. Woman with red hair says that the Lord of Light demands a sacrifice of someone who shares the same blood as the Son of Fire. We cut to Legolas Queen and Scar Guy walking past a bunch of men on crosses. All these guys are slaves and they have been sentenced to death. Legolas Queen tries to give one of them water, but he's like, no thanks, I'm not thirsty. Scar Guy tells Legolas Queen that these slaves don't have penises and they'll be very loyal to her if she frees them. Then they walk into this building with a crazy statue on top. Legolas Queen tells Biracial Emma Watson that she wants to buy all 8,000 of the slaves. I guess Biracial Emma Watson works as this guy's translator. I think she might be a slave as well. Biracial Emma Watson's boss basically tells Legolas Queen she can't afford to buy all the slaves and asks how she plans on paying for them. Legolas Queen says that she has dragons and she'll trade him one. Scar Guy is like, please don't do that, but Legolas Queen does it anyway. She looks like she's up to something though. Biracial Emma Watson's boss is like, duh, let's do it. And then Legolas Queen says she also wants to take Biracial Emma Watson. We cut outside and Legolas Queen asks Biracial Emma Watson if she has a family to return to, but Biracial Emma Watson says that they're all dead. Legolas Queen tells Biracial Emma Watson that she's taking her with her to war, and Biracial Emma Watson doesn't seem to mind. She's just happy to leave this place. Then we cut to Cleavage. Hey, it's that same girl from the brothel that Peter Dinklage was hooking up with in season one. Peter Dinklage is talking to the rat assistant. Apparently this young guy who loves looking at Cleavage saved Peter Dinklage's life somehow. Also, short-haired queen tried to detain brothel girl because she thought Peter Dinklage had a special relationship with her, whatever that means, and rat assistant thanks Peter Dinklage for getting her out of that. So it really seems like rat assistant runs this brothel but he was also the master of coin? Peter Dinklage asks for advice on his new position, and Rat Assistant actually gives him some genuine, not rat-like advice. Peter Dinklage walks outside and Greasy Mullet Guy is there. They walk through the brothel, which will be so much fun for me to edit later. Peter Dinklage asks Cleavage Lover if he's ever been with a woman, and Cleavage Lover says no. Peter Dinklage tells him he has a reward for him for saving his life. He brings him into a room and reveals not one, not two, but three women there ready to have sex with him. Losing your virginity to three professional brothel workers seems like it's way too overwhelming. I mean, my first time was scary enough and that was just with one person. Peter Dinklage is looking through Rat Assistant's old accounting books and realizes that Rat Assistant has been borrowing money from Peter Dinklage's dad to pay for things. He then goes on to say that they owe the bank tens of millions of dollars. Cleavage Lover comes back from his sexual adventures and gives Peter Dinklage the money he spent on the brothel workers back. Cleavage Lover says that the women refused to take the money because they had such a good time with him. Hey, they don't call him Cleavage Lover for nothing. We cut a green-eyed guy riding a horse in the middle of nowhere. Just then, an arrow whistles past him and a small group of men begin chasing him. They chase him for a while until finally Green-Eyed Guy gets knocked off his horse. They walk over to him and start kicking the crap out of him. They say that they're gonna rape him because he ran away. But then one of the guys gets hit by an arrow, and then all of them get hit by arrows. It's Angry Eyes! He's here to save Green-Eyed Guy again! So Angry Eyes is a good guy, right now at least because next season he seems like a big jerk. We cut to tall woman and handsome man in armor tied to trees. This group of men walks over saying that they're going to rape her. My God, this show has so much rape. 
Tall Woman tries to fend them off, but she's tied up so she can't. These men had orders from someone to bring Handsome Man in Armor back alive, but they had no orders about Tall Woman, so they plan on killing her. Handsome Man in Armor tells the ringleader that Tall Woman is from a place where all the sapphires are mined, and that Tall Woman's father would pay handsomely if his daughter was returned home alive and not violated. The ringleader changes his mind about raping Tall Woman and brings her back to her tree. Then, Handsome Man in Armor tries to convince the ringleader that his father would give him everything he could ever want if he returned Handsome Man in Armor home as well. He convinces him to unchain him from the tree, and then the ringleader offers him food. Man, Handsome Man in Armor is a smooth talker. But then, out of nowhere, these guys kick Handsome Man in Armor to the ground. They put him on a tree stump, and the ringleader pulls out a sword. He tells Handsome Man in Armor that he's not as smart as he thinks he is, and then he cuts Handsome Man in Armor's hand off. And then the episode ends. And that song that the men were singing earlier about the bear licking the girl starts playing, but it's like a modern rock version. Huh. What? Have I been missing something this whole time? Holy sh This mother lost his hand, and he's had a fake hand this whole time. He gets his hand cut off in season three, he gets a metal hand, and then he wears that the whole time. And I'm thinking, oh, this dude just has two hands. No, one of his hands is fake. And I missed that, somehow. How much other super obvious stuff have I missed? Also, Legolas Queen obviously isn't gonna let the slave owner have one of her dragons. She's probably gonna have the dragon torch the guy and then she's gonna run off with all of her penisless friends. It was interesting to see who is alive in this episode but not alive in season four. Mama Stark and Sexy Jawline Guy must die in the next, like, 15 episodes. I'm still not really sure what's going on with Green-Eyed Guy. I mean, in season one, he's friends with the Starks. In this season, he's running away from a prison. And then the next season, he's being brainwashed by the guy that helped him escape from the prison in this episode. I can't keep up with this guy. There were some comments in the last video suggesting that the voting process in the comment section is not super fair because the first person to leave a comment will be seen by everybody and they'll get the most likes. So something that was suggested to me is for me to personally pick five random episodes and for you guys to vote just on those five episodes. And I think that's fair. I think I'm willing to try that. And We'll just do it this week. If you guys absolutely hate it, let me know. We can go back to the old way. But for this week, I'm gonna pick five episodes and you guys are gonna vote on just those five as to which episode I should watch next. So I have some boxes here. This box represents the season and this box represents the episode. In each of these boxes, I have numbers written down. So this is how I'm gonna randomly pick what episodes you guys are gonna vote on. So here we go. Season two, episode two. Okay, next we have season six, episode eight. I need to get some dice next time. This is taking a while. Option three, season three, episode two, the episode right before this episode. Season five, Episode one, and the last option will be season one, episode nine. So those are the five choices for this week. I don't remember them right now because I just picked them from paper, but I'll write them on the screen right here. And those are the five that you will vote between. We're just trying this for this week, so if it sucks, we'll go back to the old way, but let's see how this goes. It's completely random, so maybe it'll be more fun. I don't know. I'm just trying to listen to you guys and do what you guys want. I'm a follower, not a leader. So let me know which episode I should watch next and keep telling me guys what you like and what you don't like because I'm all ears, baby. I'm all ears. I ain't got no nose and no mouth. I'm just ears. Here's a little graphic to let you guys know what I've already seen. Maybe this will help you pick the next episode. Okay, bye.